Hi guys, how are you doing? Guillaume here at Turman today with Mr. Phil Demel. Mr. Mr. Phil Demel, how are you doing, man? <laughs> I'm good, man. I just had some M&Ms. I got a little <laughs> sugar rush going, and that's happiness. Got to jam some journey a little while ago, so I feel good. Yeah. You took part, obviously, in that thrash movement, and then and made the blackening and and onto the locust, among many other albums. That, that was a small part of it, but yeah. But like that was life changing to me. Like these these albums and that that movement, that kind of metal was yeah. you guys invented in your face. Tell us what you're up to right now. What are you doing? Are you doing clinics? Are mm -hmm. you playing? We read a lot on the internet, so what's happening? Yeah, uh, as of right now, I'm out on a clinic tour with okay. uh, Jackson and uh, playing some stores. I did the UK guitar show in uh, the UK, and it was in, it was in London. And uh, In the UK. Most of the show is me telling my story, kind of just playing in Violence, and then playing in Machine Head, and then playing in Slayer, and now... The resume, huh? I did a record with uh, Mike Portnoy and uh, Bobby Blitz from Overkill and uh, Mark Mengi from Metal Allegiance. And okay. So I can't really say what that's about yet. Uh, that's, that's teasing right there. Okay. Yeah, okay, it no. is, but it's just it, things are kind of still under wraps. I mean, I read a lot on the internet about like all the rumors surrounding violence going back, doing tours, doing shows, doing music. I didn't even mention that. <laughs> I know, but that's why I like. Let's do some de like demystifying. Yeah, man. What's true? What's happening? What's happening with violence? Yeah. Um, well, in January, I got home from the Slayer thing, and Sean, the singer yeah. from Violence, had a liver transplant, and so you know he was sick for a while. I didn't. Mm. I don't know if he was. We didn't even know if we we're gonna see him again. You know, and uh, a year later, the liver. We hear that. You know, I'm speaking to him. Haven't seen him and uh, his transplant took. He's still been going through some complications and all this stuff, so he calls me in January and says, hey, let's do some shows. And I don't know if he's talking about going to movies or, you know, just, <laughs> you know, just with shows, like, vi like violent shows? What the fuck are you talking about? And yeah. I said, it's all up to him. Yeah. You know, the reason, there's no violence without Sean. Mm. You know, there's, uh, he's the ingredient that needs to be there for that to happen. And so we call the other dudes, uh, we call it Perry on board. Uh, we call Ray. Um, he's on board. He was, he's the guy that replaced Rob and had played. And yeah. He was actually in the band longer than Rob was in the band. So uh, Ray's on board. Dean is like, well, I don't know, maybe. And it was just the most, you know, <laughs> non committal <laughs> dude in the world has always been that way. You know, can't commit, can't commit. So, oh, maybe we'll just, you know, we'll see. And, uh, Sean gives them the ultimatum. Okay, let me know by tomorrow. <laughs> but so we've got everybody on board. Nice. We book a show. It and we just go. Let's just lowball it. Let's just play a little punk rock club, and uh, thousand capacity sells out in hours. Yeah. So then we go. I go. Fuck yeah! And the guys are all like, Oh my god! You know, I said we should try to do another show, and they're like, No way, man! This was you know, so. We get them to commit to another show, and uh, we put it up on sale, and it sells out in minutes. So it's you know a thousand cap. It's pretty good, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And but the guys are kind of shitting their pants a little bit. <laughs> it's the fucking you know. So we put the shows together. It goes. It was like it was 1986 all over again. Yeah. You know, we no barricade, no backdrop, half stacks, and uh, just people all over the stage and just pitting everywhere. And it was like a family reunion. Everybody came out of the woodwork to go and. Um, it's just kind of blossomed into, you know, the dudes all have jobs and it's hard for them to get away. Yeah. Uh, so we can't really tour, but we've been taking on one-offs. We played in Belgium for, it was our first Euro show, played the Alcatraz Festival. Yeah. Um, we're playing in Mexico City next week. Uh, we're playing in Brooklyn. We're playing, uh, where else are we going? Like Puerto Rico and we're going to Japan. We're going to tour, do like a two week tour with, uh, Sacred Reich okay. in Australia. So it's super exciting. That's awesome. That's really good to hear. Since you're sitting with it, we, we're going to talk about your guitar as well. Yeah. Uh, you've been with Jackson forever. 
Uh, since 19... Probably before you were born. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the first, every every show I watched, it was either a V or an X or like Buddy Woods. Yeah, the roads. Yeah. Uh, yeah, since like 1985, I want to say. I got my yeah, first one. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so 1985, I had a, uh, a Randy, uh, had the Randy shark fin. Yeah. One of the first ones. And it was... Uh, it was stolen. <laughs> I didn't steal it, but my old guitar player had it, and it was like a dope deal gone wrong. And he said, "Hey, you know, he owed me this. It's mine now." And in my head, I'm just rationalizing. Yeah, he said it was his, so you know, sold it. That's it's a cool story. It's, 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 it's a story. You want to hear the story? Oh yeah. Okay, yeah, so please. so I'm playing the guitar, and and the dude knows that I have it, and I painted it kind of different, and uh, so. I've been playing it for like an album cycle. It's on the cover of Eternal Nightmare. You, I, you, yeah. you have it. It's that guitar. And so we're playing a sold out show in Oakland, sweaty Omni show in downtown Oakland. We're, we're ripping and in between songs, the monitor guy comes over to me and says, hey man, I hate to do this to you, but come with me for a second. And my father was there. So I thought there's something wrong with my dad, you know, yeah. or whatever. So I go back and, and the door opens and there's Oakland police uh, the dude whose guitar it is, <laughs> and his mom and his girlfriend, and he's standing, standing there going, yeah, motherfucker, you know? And I just went, ah. Oh. Come on. I'm all, it's his guitar, you know, and give him the guitar. They cuff me, I'm in the back of this police car, violence starts <laughs> playing again. So the band is playing while I'm cuffed in the back of this fucking police car. Uh, and so my dad was there, he's an ex-cop, so he comes out, flashes his bat, hey, what's going on, you know? Mm. and. The dude knew I didn't take it. He didn't want to press charges against me. He, he got the guitar back, and so right. he they let me go. I stage dive, run back into the club, stage dive, <laughs> get a guitar from the support act, and the show goes on. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that's my first Jackson. This is so cool. <laughs> so uh, this is the Demolition Fury. And uh, I started with uh, Demolition King V, mm. and that came out in 2007. And... Uh, awesome. Jackson has a lot of V players mm -hmm. right now, so I, I transitioned from the Demolition King V into the Fury. They have the Extroyer shape, yeah. and uh, they offered, hey, do you want to have a signature? And I said, hell yeah, I do. <laughs> so I, uh, this is uh, in Snow White, and it's got a fixed bridge. I've also got one that's in, we call it the Red Tide. It's like a fade, yeah. and it's got the Floyd. But it's mahogany body, you know, pretty heavy. It is. It's the custom game. shop fellas in baritone, and that thing's, you gotta, you know, yeah. you gotta go through the truck scales when you're, you know, <laughs> going, carrying one of those. Uh, maple, neck through. Uh, I think this is Laurel, yeah. Laurel finger, fingerboard. And uh, two volumes, you know, I, I keep saying this, but I'm gonna say it again, you know, I don't know any metal guys that use tone controls, so. You know, volumes only, and uh, pretty sleek. This is, I recorded yeah. that, uh, it's called B BPMD. It's the, the record I did with Portnoy and, mm. and Blitz and Blitz, Portnoy, Mangy, Mangy Demo. No, there you go, no. BPMD. Mangy. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Saying that you left Machine Head for musical differences, like the band was going in a direction you weren't really, you weren't really into. Is that fair to say? Um, musical differences. There were some personal differences. Um, and yeah, yeah, and that we just grew apart as okay. people, and it was just time for it to time for it to end. It was getting pretty toxic, and it mm. was just. Time to be done. Yeah, you don't want to keep in that kind of a no, mindset. It's better for just, everybody. Yeah, yeah, you know, definitely. Everybody's happy now. And I want to ask you about the personal differences, but musically... I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> musically speaking, like, if you were to recall everything, like, doing your own solo stuff or your uh -huh. solo project, what kind of direction would that take? Going back full thrash or experimenting new things? I have a... Uh, we had a song that, that I wrote right at the beginning of the catharsis mm. writing sessions. And um, that was it was fast pretty much all the way through, and uh, was digging it. And Rob didn't like it, and so it didn't make it on the record. 
and uh, so I held on to it mm. and recorded it with Dave. And I've been playing it at these clinics that we're doing. Yeah. And uh, people are digging it. People love it. You know, it's, it's a lot of people. Oh, what? what? How come that wasn't on the record? You know, <laughs> and it wouldn't fit on the record. And I want to just write songs, and then find me and Dave are going to record together, and uh, just find a singer that would fit whatever the song mood yeah. is. And I've done this with this last song. I've got it out to a dude who I want to sing over it, and uh, I've got some other stuff that you know my wife can sing her ass off. Yeah. That I want you know her and I to collaborate together. I just want to make music, and it's going to be all over the place. You guys, you guys met on tour, right? Met on tour. Yeah, 2010. Was Bleeding through was opening for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was she singing in that band? Now she plays keyboards. Okay, that's fine. She sings. I have a cover band at home made up of my high school buddies, and oh, we yeah? like got back together, that's and we awesome. play the local bars, and we play. That's how I played separate ways for you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that song. But she sings the Journey songs and some uh, some Foreigner and all this fun stuff, and yeah, she's an awesome musician, super smart. Super hot. <laughs> I won't say. I'd love to hear this latest story. All right. The Slayer story. Um, Machine Head did its last show. It's the next day, kind of hungover, and and so I, I wake up and I'm go like get the two year old out of bed, and I'm standing at the foot of the bed, and I get a text, and it's from it's from Carrie, you know, and it's like, hey man, you know, can you be can you learn 19 songs and be out here in two days? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? And I dropped the phone. Wow. And on, under the bed, you know, I'm at the foot of the bed, and I drop it on the phone, and she's like, what, you know? And I pick it up and read it again to make sure it's not like, <laughs> yeah. well, maybe, perhaps, or there's a small chance, or it's just like, but no, we need it's this like, to happen. And I show it to her, and she's like, you have to go, yeah. you know? And so I'm oh, my God, amazing, right? And uh, so I'm all like, Send me the song list now. <laughs> I need to get started now. You know, so yeah. he sends me, sends me the set. Uh, Monday, it's the last. It's I just got divorced from Machine Head, mm. so I go down to the storage and I pick up my gear, and that's my Monday. Then Tuesday morning, I'm on a flight to Germany, listening to all the songs, <laughs> you know, and and writing them down and and structuring them out, and mm. uh, the flight takes off, and then my Spotify, it's like, oh fuck, I forgot to download this. Oh, <laughs> so no. it's like, I, uh, so I hop online real quick, and I, <laughs> I'm able to do that, and spend the entire flight just mapping out the songs, yeah. and figuring it out, and going through them in your head, and you're kind of, because I don't have a guitar, I get, yeah. I land there, cool, I'll have a night, through the night, into the next day, to, to work on stuff. Guitars don't show up. So I call ahead, I'm Scott Ian, hey, is there a good, you got a guitar that I can do? No, it's all in the truck, you know. It was Johnny Rock and Roll from Anthrax, Johnny Denaid, I don't know, I always call him Johnny Rock and Roll because I can't <laughs> pronounce his last name. Nobody has a guitar. So Kerry has one that's, it's locked down because he uses a Kaler, yeah. uh, but it's, F, it's in drop B, which is one song, Payback is in that. Okay. So. I'm all right, well, I need to learn that one anyway, so I'll spend time on that. But I spend the entire night like transcribing all these other songs and solos from drop B into you know E flat standard and just going, okay, those, here's the finger. I can't play along to it, just fucking. But then uh, played the first, the first show with them with uh, two songs of rehearsal at Soundcheck Whoa. before the first show. And, That's uh, insane. It was it was insane, man. And and but if you ask anybody like whatever your favorite band is, if they called you on this oh, notice, yeah, 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 and you'd fucking do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah you do it. You get it done. Everybody's yeah. like, oh, I wouldn't have done that. It's like, yeah, you would have. Yeah. If X band called you, yeah, no, I get you it. would bear down and you would do it and get it done. Oh, so, definitely. I was, Transcribing all the songs to a different tuning. That was my next level. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Is that bound to happen again at some point or? With Slayer? Yeah. No. Just like. They're almost done. Yeah. Yeah, they're almost done. I mean, yeah. God forbid anything happened to Gary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, we're not, he was, his, his father was dying and he wanted to come mm. home and see him. And in 2007, my father died when I was on tour. Yeah. And we were on tour with uh, Trivium and Dragon Force and Arch Enemy and Shadows Fall. Mm. And so I left the tour with like five shows left, went home to be with my family. And the dude stepped in from the support acts mm. and f continued. They played my parts and it, I think like five different guitar players played. And so, but I made it on the last, I came back yeah. for the last show was at, uh, in Helsinki at the ice hall in, in Helsinki. And so for me to be able to reciprocate that with Gary, come and help somebody who's going through the same thing. You know, it was amazing that he got to go home and say goodbye, you know, mm. he got the closure. And, you know, my second show is on the anniversary of my father's death. And then the last show is in the same venue, the Helsinki Wonder, Ice Hall, yeah. that I came back to. So it's all this cir full oh, circle coming and man. connection. And it was, it was awesome, man. It, it felt positive and it felt, yeah. you know, with the band like Slayer that I, they're the reason why I play heavy music. Mm. All these, you know, I got chills just thinking about it, you know, yeah. it's just so much coolness, man. It just really, and I hate to use the word blessed because it gets over, you know, hash, hashtag, hashtag blessed, blessed, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, I feel so hashtag blessed, you know, but I do, I feel fortunate and just so grateful for everything that's, that's happened and, you know, and even with Machine Head, you know, I'm not gonna let the 2% ruined the 98% of oh, yeah. fucking Absolutely. badassery that it was and yeah. life changing and just, it was fucking amazing. We yeah. did amazing things and went amazing places and created these amazing songs together. And you know, that's what I wanna focus on and, and have that be, let that be, you know, the father of the thought, just be positive. I can't tell that at all. <laughs> Man, thank you so much. Yeah. That was that was really cool stories right there. <laughs> right on. Right on. Thank you guys for having me here and let me jam through your awesome rig and make some noise that was, and it was good noise. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty loud. Yeah, yeah. You guys are in the middle of nowhere out here. It's just like the weird <laughs> Halloween yeah. three town where they made the masks and you know, <laughs> fucking silver shamrock coming out of Well, are we coming out here? What's yeah, going on? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, people need to know why they're going. So if you get lost in the area, it's nothing. It's just out in the woods. Love it, man. I love it. It's a cool place. It is. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you for coming. Thank Absolutely. you guys for watching as well. Um, that was Phil Demo at Terman. Thank you so much. And we'll see you guys soon.